Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday night service from Lighthouse Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Gary Cox, and just want to thank you for tuning in and being a part of our service from Lighthouse Baptist Church. And we trust this broadcast to be a real blessing to you. Uh, we're coming uh, live to you from by video, and uh, we ask that you share this video uh, with your friends. And uh, uh, just want to speak to you on a few things uh, today that the Lord has laid on our hearts. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in and ask for you to share the video. And uh, let me just give you an invitation to our church. We're located in Millinport. Um, our services are Sunday school at 10, morning worship at 11. Then we have Wednesday night service. We have Bible study for the adults. And then we have King's Kids. Um, and then we also have youth. So feel free to come out and be a part of our church if you're looking for a home church. And um, we stand uh, uh, on the Word of God as being the inf infallible and errant Word. And uh, we just trust God that, um, that uh, God's going to do great things in your life and our lives as well. So we just appreciate you tuning in and being a part of our, our service on this Sunday evening. And uh, we want to just lift up some uh, prayer requests tonight. We know that there's uh, uh, many people um, that are hurting and um, that need our prayers. And, and uh, just before I went on the air, uh, I had a friend of mine. She um, had requested prayer for a friend of hers that uh, she found her mother that had passed away this morning. So we want to lift up her and we want to lift up that family. And we lift up those that... Um, are basically shut in and can't uh, really come to church uh, through safety reasons uh, with the virus. We want to lift uh, our lift our prayers up for for you. We miss you, and um, and uh, you are in our hearts and you're in our prayers. And uh, if there's anything we can do, then um, you just feel free to 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 call us, and we'll be glad to to come and help uh, any way we can. Um, we thank God. Um, for this time of the year that we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Uh, thank God um, for, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and we also thank God for the, the, the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The tomb is empty, and that's what makes our salvation possible uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ because he was once dead, but he's alive forevermore. He seated on the right hand of the Father, and uh, as more and more um, people tune in, we thank you for tuning in and being a part of our service. I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Hold your finger there. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, we'll just give you a word of thought tonight. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for being able to, to come back, Father, by the means of video. Uh, Lord, um, we want to lift up uh, these prayer requests to you. Uh, Lord, we want to lift up, uh, Lord, this request that uh, came to me just before I went on the air. Uh, Father, a dear friend of ours uh, found her mother that had passed away. And Lord, we lift that family up to you and we ask that you would comfort them and, and your grace would be sufficient for them and, and, and all their needs, Lord. And then, Lord, we, we lift up those that, uh, Father, are sick and uh, Father, those that need a touch from you, we lift them up to you, and we ask that you would just go by and touch them in a mighty way. And Lord, we ask for the ones that tunes in on this video tonight, we ask, uh, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts, not through my preaching, but Lord, through the word. I pray the word of God would speak to them, and Lord, that uh, they would be touched. Lord, help us to surrender our lives to you Realize that, Lord, you want all of us, not just half of us, but, Lord, you want all of our lives, Father. You want us to be totally surrendered uh, to you. And, Lord, I pray help us to, to do that. And, Lord, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name for what you do. Amen. If we look in First Samuel chapter 15, and uh, maybe if the Lord's willing that I'll just stay uh, uh, in First Samuel uh, 15 and maybe through chapter 16, uh, next week, but I want to talk to you um, on this topic tonight on total surrender. How many of you know that um, that Christ, he wants all of us, amen? He wants us totally surrendered to him. A lot of times uh, 
we um, we don't really do that. Amen. A lot of times we give God only part of us, but God wants us totally surrendered. And we see in First Samuel chapter fifteen, we we see the story of Saul. And how the Bible says in 1 Samuel 15 and 1, it says, And Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over the people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. And that's what God is asking for us to do. He's asking for you and I to hearken unto the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord today? It is his precious book, the word of God. Uh, that's his word, and the Bible says that it's settled in heaven, and um, and and you and I, we have instructions uh, from the word of God, and we must follow those instructions, or we will pay the consequences, and here we read in 1 Samuel chapter 15 that um, Samuel um, had came to Saul and anointed him king, and told him that he had, that he had seen the, the Amalekites that how that they had caused affliction upon the children of Israel when they entered out of Egypt. Well, God told uh, Samuel to tell Saul to go and to destroy the Amalekites and uh, to destroy them, the livestock and everything. Well, the Bible says that uh, that Saul went, and uh, the Bible says that, uh, that he began to smoke the Amalekites, but... Um, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 8, and it says that, But Saul took Agai, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. In verse 9, but Saul, uh, uh, said he, but Saul and the people spared Agai, the king of the Amalekites, and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, they uh, that they destroyed utterly. And then immediately, the Bible says in verse ten that um, the word of the Lord came unto Samuel, uh, saying, uh, and God uh, said that He repenteth that He had set Saul up to be king. Why did he? Uh, why did God say that? Because Saul refused to listen to God's commands. Let me just say, friends, today that yes, God is love, but God is also a God of consuming fire. Amen. And we must realize that we will pay the consequences if we don't totally surrender our life to Him. Amen. So, uh, we know that um, through salvation that um that Jesus came to pay the sin penalty of death for every man we must go through the lord jesus christ um and there's no other way uh and the, the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation let me say, friends, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet, there's many theories and there's many tales about things that you can do to get to heaven. But there's only one way, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. But here, we see that Saul was disobedient to God. God gave him a task to do, and Saul did not perform it um, to, to the way God wanted him to do. Let me and let me just uh, let me just say a few things on my heart. I believe God wants you and I totally surrendered. He don't want half of us, but He wants all of us. We must uh, we must give God all of ourselves. Amen. Notice um, in uh, verse verse nine of First Samuel, it says that Samuel that Saul he spared Agai the king, but yet God said for him to utterly destroy everything that was there of the Amalekites. Let me say this, that God does not want half-hearted Christians. Amen. I'll say that again. God does not want half-hearted Christians. Have you ever seen them before? Well, uh, when everything's going good, um, they don't need God, and uh, they you can't seem to find them at church. But when something goes wrong, guess what? They show up at the house of God. 
and uh, they start crying out for help. Friends, God wants us in the good times and in the bad times. We must, um, we must uh, not be half-hearted Christians. Think about this. God wants Christians that are sold out to him. Amen. Let me say that again. God wants Christians that are sold out to him. We can't, we can't uh, live uh, areas in our life that does not please God and then live some areas in our life that pleases God. That, I mean, we, we have to sail out and we have to, to serve God totally and be totally committed to him, not half-hearted. That's exactly what Saul did. And the Bible says, because Saul did that in verse 13, and Samuel came to Saul and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou uh, of the Lord, I have performed um, the commandment of the Lord. Now this was uh, Saul saying to Samuel, blessed be the Lord. He said, for I have, uh, I have uh, did what, uh, what God had asked me to do. Notice in verse 14, and Samuel says, what remaineth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and lowing of the oxen which I hear. Let me just say, um, I believe that um, that there are uh, bleeding sheep and lowing oxen in our lives today. Um, that we, uh, it seems that uh, we put aside all that we do not want, but spare or hold on to those worldly things that we like the best. And yet God is saying, sell out. So basically, here's what Saul did. He saved the king alive, and he saved the best of the oxen. But yet God told him to destroy everything. And Samuel says, what meanest then the bleeding of the sheep that I hear in my ear and the lowing of the oxen? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites uh, for, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and, and the rest he utterly destroyed. Now I'm going to read a, a passage of scripture here, and, uh, and what we have to realize um, in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22, here was Samuel's response. Have the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. You know, I was thinking about this as I was um, as I was studying this. I was thinking about as we were children, and how that our parents would tell us to do things. Now, don't you know that that made our parents happy when we obeyed them? Certainly it did. I imagine they smiled and they praised us. You know, we're so thankful that you listened to us and, and you did those things. But let me just say that if we did not listen to them, then there were more than likely there were consequences, were they not? There were consequences. They could see the danger that lied ahead before us that we couldn't see as children but our parents could see that danger. Let me say, friends, today, God knows the danger that the enemy has, and he is warning you and I to stay away from those things, and he is warning us to surrender all to him because the enemy is a liar. Uh, he's out to steal and to kill and to destroy, uh, but God said, I'm, I'm here, that I came to give you life and give it more abundantly. Let me just say that our testimony means everything in the world to us. If I say that I love God and I'm in the world and I live another way, that's a lie. That's bringing, uh, that's bringing shame. And, uh, that's bringing disobedience to God. Amen. And uh, God does not, he does not want that. He does, he don't, uh, we have to realize that, that it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Now, let me read verse 23. The Bible says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and the stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and he also hath rejected thee from being king. Now, let me just say here, 
because um, Saul did not follow the task that God had laid before him. The Bible says that he rejected him from being king. Let me say to a child of God, there's blessings, there's blessings, there's blessings on the road to following Christ. Amen. But let me also say that there are consequences when you and I, when we do not uh, follow the instructions that God has set before us, there will be consequences. Amen. I'm, I'm a firm believer that if we name the name of Christ and, and we walk away from that as a born again believer, there's going to be chastisement. Amen. I believe that God is going to warn us and he's going to do things because he will not allow the, the blood to be trampled uh, under our feet, under his feet. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, gave us an example to live by. The same way with salvation. Salvation, Jesus paid the price. And the Bible says there's n no other way. Uh, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Nicodemus came to him and he, he came to Jesus by night. And he says, you know, uh, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. Nicodemus made the statement, be, how can a man be born again in his mother's womb when he is old? Let me say, friends, we must have that spiritual birth uh, in our lives. And uh, Jesus paid the ultimate price when he went to Calvary. He died for our sins. If we turn away from salvation, there is a penalty to be paid. Amen. There is a penalty that will be paid, and that penalty is death, and it's hell. But here we see that uh, the kingship was stripped from Saul because of his unbelief. Let me say, friends, that I believe that you and I, we are not blessed by God as people and a nation because we have turned to our own ways and not the ways of God. We must sell out to God. God will never uh, use us with disobedience in our life. Did you hear me? God will never use us with disobedience in our life. Let me see this. God sees the things that we have covered up. You know, I believe in, in Christians' lives today, here's the whole back. Here's why God is not using you or not blessing you um, is because there's some things of this world that you're holding on to. Amen. Let me say, friends, you can hide them from me. You can hide them from your uh, spouses. You can hide them from your children. But friends, you can't hide sin from God. Amen. God sees us. He knows us. He knows us. And uh, we can't hide those things from him. But notice the Bible says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and the stubbornness as an iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He also hath rejected thee from being king. Amen. God is love, but he's also a God of consuming fire. To a child of God, when we give our life to Christ, our duty is to walk in the ways of God and to live a testimony and live a life that people can see Jesus in us. If we, as a Christian, we walk away from that, will we lose our salvation? No, we won't, we'll never lose our sonship. But I'm going to tell you what, we'll lose our fellowship with him. We'll lose our fellowship. We'll lose our blessings. And uh, we'll lose those things. And I believe some of the most miserable people in this world today is Christians that are backslid on God and not living for him. Amen. The consequences to a sinner, there is a way uh, to eternal life, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. But if any man will bypass that and go, other, go another way, he's the same as a thief and a robber, and there are consequences. Let me encourage you today. Are you following Jesus? Have you gave your life to him? Are you 100% totally committed to God? Let me say, do it. Give your life, not only for salvation, but you give your all to him. 
and you commit to him, I'm going to follow you because God wants our total surrender. He wants not half of us, but he wants all of us. Now, if you're out there today and you've never asked Jesus in your heart, Jesus is the way. The Bible says that if we would confess our sins and ask him to come in our heart, then the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and you will be immediately passed from death unto life and will not have to pay, face the consequences of death and hell when you leave this earth. Amen. We think about life. Life is so short. And the Bible says life is like a vapor. We wasted too much time. We must give our total lives to him. We must surrender all and not hold on to the things that we're in, we are enjoying, the things that would hold us back from God. We must surrender to those and we must uh, we must um, do away with those things and follow him. God wants us totally surrender to him. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, um, we know the warnings that were that were come out of your word today. That Lord, um, um, that disobedience, um, uh, Lord, is dangerous. Um, and Lord, we know that uh, that sin separates from you. I pray God help us to be totally surrendered to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you for what you mean to us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you tuning in. Please share the video.